to my studio. I'm Wendy O'Brien. Thanks for dropping by. Today I'm going to be demonstrating nine ways to blend graphite pencil. So let's get started. There are so many ways to blend graphite, making it a very versatile medium to work in. Each blending method has its advantages and disadvantages and creates its own unique finish. The first way to blend graphite pencil is just by simply layering. This requires a bit of time and understanding of the graphite scale on your pencils. I will have a card pop up to a video explaining how it works. You start with a mid to high H pencil. I use the 3H. This will fill in all those little grooves of the paper. You then layer on top with a mid range pencil. I use an HB, then a 2B, and for the darkest I use 4B for this demonstration. It is important to use a light touch in overlapping the different pencils to form the smooth gradient blend. When layering in this manner, you preserve the tooth of the paper and can add many layers and details over the top. It does take a bit more time to make smooth transitions without additional tools. The second way to blend would be burnishing. This is when you lay down your pencil in layers and then use firm pressure to create a smooth blend. You can typically skip the harder pencil and just jump in with an HB or softer if you choose. You can get very dark and saturated values with this method using say a 4B as I did here instead of needing to go to an 8B. It does flatten the tooth of the paper and will create more shine. You may not be able to do any further layering so burnishing should be close to the last if not the last thing you should do. Method 3 is blending stumps or tatillions. Blending stumps are compressed paper and tortillions are rolled. They both do the same job, however. They come in various sizes, so make sure you choose the size appropriate for the area you are blending. I personally prefer blending stumps. After laying down enough graphite on the paper, you can then rub the stump over the area to blend it out. I like to use it at an angle unless I need to get into small areas where I will then use the tip. Make sure to use a circular motion or single directional strokes. This will help avoid start and stop points and leaves a very smooth, well blended finish. This is probably my favorite tool to use with graphite. I also like to use these to draw and shade lighter areas with residual graphite left on the stump. Unfortunately, it can flatten the tooth of the paper so care should be taken to not apply too much pressure. It can also create a shine depending upon the amount of graphite in the area, making adding additional layers difficult. The fourth way to blend graphite is with a Q-tip, also known as cotton buds and cotton swabs, or you can use a cotton ball depending upon the size of the area you are blending. You lightly blend the graphite with the Q-tip using circular or single sweeping motions. This will leave a smooth area behind. Using Q-tips are very cost effective and you can throw them away when you're done. They're great for tight areas like eyes and it doesn't damage the tooth or the paper. The fifth method is using a paintbrush or makeup brush. You can use round, filbert, or shader. I typically use the shader or filbert for this. Just work in circular motions to blend the graphite out. You can also apply graphite to your piece by using graphite powder or picking up graphite scribbled on a palette. This method doesn't leave as smooth of a finish as others and if you aren't careful it can look a bit blotchy if you're applying the graphite to the piece with the brush. The next method is number six, using a tissue. When using a tissue, you want to make sure it is smooth and doesn't have any texture to it. You also want to make sure it is plain tissue and not infused with aloe or lotion. I wrap the tissue around my finger and work in circular motions blending out the graphite. This is a great technique for skin and any other subject that needs the smoothest of blends. It is difficult to use in small areas and keep a very crisp edge. You also more than likely need a few layers to build up value as this does remove quite a bit of graphite. Number seven is using a cloth or a chamois. You can find chamois in your local art store. Much like the tissue, you don't want a lot of texture and old soft t-shirts work great for this. You can use this in much the same manner as a tissue, wrapping it around your finger and blending in circular or single directional motions until you get the blend you desire. The outcome is not as smooth as the tissue and it is difficult to keep that crisp edge. Method 8 is using soft tools. These tools come in many shapes and are typically used for pan pastels. You can layer your pencils as usual and blend out using these tools in a circular or single directional motion. I love using these tools with my graphite powder especially as I can get a lot of coverage very quickly. This is a great method for creating skies and backgrounds. This also gives you one of the smoothest finishes. You do need to be careful around the edges, but with so many shapes 
and careful navigation, it is easy to do. The ninth and final method is something we all have, and that is using your finger. Now the best tool to use is you can transfer oils and sweat from your finger to your piece. The results are probably the roughest of all the methods as it really doesn't push the graphite into those peaks and valleys of the paper, though it is always handy. I usually use this just to tap an area back a bit, but not for overall blending. Besides, your fingers get really dirty too. What is your favorite way to blend graphite? Be sure to let me know in the comments and if you are new to the channel and would like to see more tutorials like this, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss out. Until next time, keep on arting. Bye!